Okay, there we go. Hi everyone, how's it going? Tim here and um, it's been a while and as you can hear I'm still um, a wee bit sick. I did not really get better much uh, much better from the last stream and basically had to travel more for more stuff but you know what the hell I am at least not coughing every other word so let's finally talk about entrepreneur first this is what I am um, going to talk about today and uh, you know as usual if you have any questions uh, do ask them in chat I'll be looking there regularly so um, yeah uh, let's see what I can tell you about it I'll talk about a bit my um, bleh, god damn it um, I have to apologize because I'm still not thinking completely straight so I'm gonna be um, sometimes uh, saying complete bollocks uh, so you have to bear with me all right, um, so let's let's start by, um, I guess, talking what exactly is Entrepreneur First and how exactly the program works. Um, if you never heard of them, uh, because I, for example, didn't, right? So I got uh, into the program absolutely randomly, I would say. Um, the uh, Entrepreneur First is essentially a startup accelerator or non-accelerator, as they say themselves, uh, because they do it quite differently. So they are in the core, at the core, a uh, seed investor. Um, they pick up the startups at the very early stages and give them money to do something, to build something awesome, and then uh, put them in contact with their, like a network of investors, right? Uh, so that they could raise a proper round. Um, the difference here is that when you normally have um, any accelerators or whatever, any programs, uh, you come there already with um, idea with a team and uh, more frequently than not with some sort of a prototype product, whatever, and uh, most most likely you even have some traction, right? The EF actually works quite differently. So uh, when you come to them, you don't really have anything. So you don't, you don't have to have anything. They literally select people based on their uh, stories. So you just have to tell them, hey guys, you know, I'm interested in building a startup. And here's my life experience so far. This is exactly what the application process looked like. I had a couple of calls with um, uh, guys from the EF team and they asked me a bunch of questions and then they decided if I'm in or not. And that, that's literally it. You don't have to have any ideas. You don't have to have anything, uh, which was kind of um, incredible to me, I guess, at first. So I was like, you know, what, what is what is even going on? How is this going to work? It was kind of kind of weird. <clears throat> so yeah, once you get in, um, essentially what happens is there is around 50 people. So depending, I guess, on the cohort, you will get more or less. Um, in the Berlin, this is their first try and our cohort is 56 people, which is quite a lot, uh, to be honest. This was like um, insane experience. So once you get in, uh, once uh, the whole program starts, um, what happens is they take all of those people, they put them into one room. Um, in our case, we are in Berlin in the um, co-working space called uh, Factory. So we are, I mean, I think the original one is literally Factory. The second building they have is, is just basically a big office building with a lot of spaces there people can just hang out, you know. It's, uh, it's a pretty nice, nice place and um, has benefits like a ball pit, you can jump into it, yes. Um, uh, but yeah, so basically they put us in uh, and um, after some short introductions, we began um, socializing, I would put it, right? So you have eight weeks to form a team. You need one more co-founder, otherwise you're gonna be out of the program. So if you don't find anyone within eight weeks, you're out. And what that means is that everyone just runs around like crazy, try, trying to figure out who do they want to work with. And um, well, when there's 56 people in a room, it's really fucking hard. I, I don't think I've socialized this much in my life, like ever. That was just insane. It's like you have, I don't know, half an hour, maybe an hour to talk with those guys and figure out if you like the person like you know if you think that you have a good fit skills wise and if you think you could work for the next five to ten years on something common right so it's like um yeah it's not an easy task um and what's more the um, ef team always pushes you towards um creating this sort of trying to create the team faster right so their approach is not like you know talk to everyone, figure out who you like, and only then form a team. 
What they actually want to see is people randomly creating teams, trying to work together, and if it doesn't work, they just break up. So uh, sort of they normalize this breakup uh, procedure where they say, okay, you know, it's okay to break up um, as long as you understand that, you know, it's not going to work with two of you, which was a very weird thing to hear, but it actually makes a lot of sense. So um, I've, I mean, we've already seen like, you know, within the first week teams form and break up within like two days or something when people just understand that they will not be able to deliver together. They just uh, go different paths and say, you know, it was good working with you. You're a good guy, but um, that's it, right? Um, the interesting bit here is that, um, I, like fascinating even, uh, I out of all those 56 people, I've spoken to just about all of them. I think there's like a couple more people that I haven't personally talked to, um, mostly because some of them are still not here because they're traveling or some of them are just not there uh, long enough for me to catch them basically in a free moment, right? Because it's, it's also hard. Um, what, what absolutely fascinates me is that all of those people that I've talked to, they are all incredible. Like literally, I haven't seen one person who was not good. And all of them have absolutely different backgrounds, absolutely different skill sets and some crazy lives that they had before joining EF essentially. It's like um, a lot of people who did their, like who have PhDs, a lot of people who already had businesses before, a lot of people who, um, I don't know, like just insane stuff going on. And all of them are extremely interesting to talk to. So it's, it's really, like it was really hard to pick someone um, who I really wanted to work with, right? Not just because um, I don't know who I wanna work with, well, although, you know, that's kind of a part of it as well, but more so than anything, it was about uh, trying to figure out um, like, you know, what kind of uh, ideas excite us both? Because if you kind of get in a team and you work on something that you don't like or the other person doesn't like, um, we, it just, just won't work, right? So you have to find a common area where both of you are kind of excited about. And uh, like, again, as I said, some people just jumped into the teams right away and tried to form them and figure out, you know, if it works or not. While others, like me, for example, I just spoken to um, whoever I could. I basically isolated. Uh, so, you know, since I'm a techie, I'm a programmer. I know that I can build things, but I know that I cannot sell. Like for the life, uh, like even if my life would depend on it, I won't be able to sell anything. This is just like, I know this is my weakness, right? So I'm not a business person and I'm literally terrible at all of that. Um, because I tried it before and well, it didn't really work out that well. So I was looking for a business person and um, the split in the whole like cohort is about 50-50. So you get like 50% of tech guys and then 50% of business guys. Um, that doesn't mean that they are necessarily purely technical or purely business people because there was uh, quite a lot of people who had backgrounds in both areas, which was very interesting, I thought. So that was like, you know, the guys who was like, yeah, I've been working in like uh, investments, for example, but I have my PhD in uh, computer science. Or there was a guy who was working as a, as, what was it? I think like CFO, so the financial person, and he had a background in genetics or something like this. I was like, you know, this is really crazy stuff going on. But it was um, quite easy to isolate people who I thought would be a good fit for me. So like uh, the strong business backgrounds, uh, sales, marketing, all that kind of stuff, and just focus on them. I've um, like, I think by the day three or four, no, by the day four, I basically come down to like four people and I spend the last day talking to all four of them and trying to figure out which one do I pair with. That was probably the toughest decision in my life, man. It was so hard to figure out where to go from there uh, because all four of them, as I said, like, you know, they had incredible backgrounds, they had incredible ideas and they were very interesting to even just talk to. So it was like pretty tough. Um, but uh, yeah, I ended up by the, uh, that was the end of the week one essentially and I ended up pairing with uh, Fabio who is uh, crazy, um, I don't like, he says he's Italian, but he actually like knows four languages and has German parents and uh, is just 
yeah, crazy person, as most of them are. Uh, so yeah, he is working in uh, health industry, so like uh, anything related to fitness and health in general, and um, we're trying to build something within this sector, basically. Um, in parallel with all of that, we had uh, proper lectures, like we had lectures and exercises. Uh, lectures were aimed at uh, teaching people how does the business works. Um, so if you are, if you haven't tried to do uh, any startups before, or you know, if you don't have any background in that, uh, and there were quite a lot of people who uh, had no idea basically on how to do that those lectures are extremely useful. Um, on the other hand, if you have been trying to do startups, um, for example, you know, I have like a quite a record in that area. Most of the stuff that they uh, talked about is something that I knew already. So that wasn't a particularly interesting way. It was okay. You know, it's like, it's never hurts to refresh, get a refresher on that. Um, there were also exercises related to those lectures. So like we had the lecture on um, ideation and brainstorming essentially. All this, you know, like the lateral thinking, vertical thinking, whatever else is like uh, typical ways to brainstorm essentially. And then we had a exercise where we would split into groups randomly, or I guess it's not exactly randomly. It's basically the EF team decided which groups we were going to be in. So we split in those groups and just spend like 15 minutes coming up with the stupidest ideas we could ever come up with. And there was some, it was fun. I mean, you know, it's like, uh, quite quite interesting also to see how people um, actually think because whenever you change group you always encounter different people and you see that they actually the way that they are thinking the way that they are coming up with the ideas can be incredibly different from person to person like there are some people who just you know when they when they heard that you can come up with ideas um, about anything and they don't have they don't have to be realistic they don't have to have any proof behind them or whatever they just go crazy. Like, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a person like this, right? If you tell me that, okay, that doesn't have to be implementable, it doesn't have to be realistic, I'll just go bonkers. And it's, it's just fun, right? So why would you not do that? Um, on the other hand, we had a people who still, even after they heard that, they were just sticking so hard to be like, but man, you cannot really do that, can you? And just go into like sort of discussion about whether you can uh, implements like, for example, what was it? We was discussing how to fix traffic jams. I was like, okay, so we can just put jump pads and uh, zip lines everywhere. And I was like, well, that won't be safe. I was like, you know, who cares? <laughs> but, but yeah, apparently it was very important for that person. But um, yeah, so it's like very interesting to see also the different ways that people think. Um, that was week one. Um, week two, again, it was mostly about forming teams for the people who still haven't, because again, if you don't form a team within eight weeks, you are out. And uh, that's basically, uh, you're done, right? So you cannot continue the program. Um, we also had a lecture, which I did not participate in because I was lying down uh, at home sick and dead. Uh, yeah, that's also part of the week one. I think I caught a cold or maybe a flu. I'm not, I'm still not sure what the hell is it. But uh, I've essentially kept going to the office with the, the whole like stuff. And there's, there's quite a lot of people actually who was like coughing and sneezing, you know. So it's like, I think it's a Berlin thing. Like they, they have some flu epidemia or whatever. And uh, by the end of a week when I got home and I um, arrived on Friday evening, I just fell down to the bed and died. Like I was dead. I, like I spent three days in the bed eating any medicine I could find just to get better essentially. <laughs> So I skipped the um, Tuesday lecture that was on um, what did I, customer development, right? But uh, by the looks of the slides and the videos that they recorded and shared later, there was again, you know, since, since I already tried doing startups before, there was not that many new things that I didn't know about it. And uh, they also had some like exercises about uh, like, you know, the mom's test and all that kind of stuff. So um, if you don't know, there's this uh, thing called mom's test and there's a, I think it's a book actually originally. Let me just look it up real quick. Yes, it's a, it's a book by Rob Fitzpatrick. And um, the idea is that if you go around asking people, do you like my startup? Do you like my idea? They will always say yes, because people are actually nice. And this is why it's called mom test, because, you know, if you go and ask your mom, like, mom, do you like, do you want to use my new thing that I come up with? 
your mom will always say yes, right? Because she's your mom, because she likes whatever you do. And um, well, unless you have a cruel mom who just hates you, but that's a different story. So the idea is that all people are uh, nice and 90% of them, if you ask them, you know, do you like this? They will say, yes, I do. And then you actually build the product and try to sell it and nobody buys it. And um, because they are just not ready to commit to that promise, right? So the um, idea of mom's test is actually instead of asking them, like, do you like my thing? You ask them questions um, around the problem, right? So how, how, like, how, what kind of problems do you have? How do you solve them now? Sort of, um, how, how to put it best, the questions that lead you towards what you actually want to know through the third party road, right? So you don't ask directly, you actually ask related questions, so uh, something like this. But it's, um, I mean, the book itself is pretty short. So if you're interested, it's uh, definitely a good book. So I highly recommend getting it. So you can get it on Amazon or I think it has even like PDF solver somewhere. Oh yeah, PDF on Gumroad. So there you go. Um, it's 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 like, it's, it's a solid book. So I definitely recommend it if you are looking into a startup area. Right, so that was the second week. And again, I missed the customer development thing. I went there on Wednesday for the team meeting. Um, we had like this, uh, there's basically two uh, kind of private mentorship things you get. One is for you personally, when you meet with one uh, from the EF team and you just sit and talk about whatever bothers you. Uh, in my case, nothing really bothers me so far. Everything went um, incredibly well. So, you know, we just talked about EF and like, yeah, this took like 10 minutes out of allocated half an hour. So not much problems here. And the second mentorship you will get is once you form a team, you will actually get a team um, counseling, I guess, uh, where you with your partner sit down in front of one of the members of EF. And I think they alternate the member every week so that you get like fresh perspectives on your ideas and you just talk about you know what do you want to do do you need any help what kind of problems do you have what kind of idea do you have why did you come up with this idea why do you think you're going to be good so on and so forth so their uh, target is to build your idea into convincing pitch because the final of the whole program is, it's actually not 16 weeks as they originally said. I mean, it, it kind of is, but not completely, right? So after eight weeks, once all the teams are formed, you have two more weeks to prepare your pitch. And then their investor team, like the, the EF investors, the ones who uh, invest the seed round, they will come from London to Berlin in, in our case, and they will listen to the pitches from all our teams, right? And uh, if they decide that your idea is good and they invest money into you, then you're done. So there's like 10 weeks and you're done. If not, you will have four more weeks to refine your pitch and try again. And if you fail, then you're out. If not, then again, they give you money and you continue for the next uh, round basically, right? So um, yeah, that was the team counseling. Uh, What's interesting is that they, um, they, they explicitly tell you do not build anything, right? We don't want you to code anything, which was um, very strange, I would say for me, you know, because you, I, I, like in my opinion, maybe I'm wrong here, I don't know, I'm a, I'm a techie. Uh, in my opinion, it's always better to present with some sort of a physical thing, like a prototype at least, right? And it gives you higher chances because I can actually show you can deliver. Um, hey, I um, uh, 0x800, 700, MF. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, but I don't know how to read your nickname. So hello, welcome to the stream. <laughs> um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. As I already said, I will be more than happy to answer. Um, okay, so continuing my thought. Uh, yeah, so they refine your pitch and they say you shouldn't build anything. Um, I still think it's a bit backwards. So, you know, I guess uh, if, you, if you're talking about a very complex product with a very grand vision, then um, absolutely you won't ju just won't have time to build it, right? Because it's like two months. So the best you can hope for is to make a really solid pitch deck and come up with a really good story on why you can execute it the best. But it is, yeah, it is, it is a bit strange. Uh, we're gonna see how that ends up. Um, 
Right, so and the final part of the week two was the craziest insanity that ever probably happened to me. Um, people call me Hex. All right, Hex, uh, that sounds like a good name, way easier to read than, <laughs> than your actual username, so I'm going to call you Hex as well. Hi, Hex, how's it going? Okay, back to the... Um, um, uh, it is it is a recap of what I am currently doing. So I am right now in the EF Berlin uh, program. Uh, there's been so the first two weeks uh, are now past. This is this was the second week, and uh, I'm basically talking about my experience, how the EF works, and all that kind of stuff. All right. Um, so yes, let me finish my thought about the last part of the week, which I um, I honestly never thought that would kind of end up like this. So as you might know, if you watch my programming streams, I'm a software developer, right? So I've been developing software for heck knows how many years, and this is what I typically do. And um, well, it somehow ended up that at the end of the week, I bought some tickets to the Köln or Cologne, if you uh, like the English pronunciation, and went to the fitness expo. Yep, so I was for one day at fitness expo walking around very ripped people <laughs> and talking to a different companies trying to figure out what kind of problems they have. Um, it is, on one hand, it's, it, it's kind of very strange um, because, you know, I never was in an environment like this. On the other hand, it was a very unique experience. Um, it is, like, it is, a, yeah, it, it's not exactly a boot camp. It's more of, uh, as I said in the beginning, it's like a SID funding, um, SID investors, essentially. It's just the way they do the um, onboarding is slightly different from your typical accelerators. And they also say they are non-accelerator. So the idea is that instead of coming up uh, with a team and with an idea and maybe with a prototype and product, they get people in just by their backgrounds. You know? So they decide that you're cool enough, you basically get in, and then you have eight weeks to find a partner, come up with an idea, and prepare a pitch deck. So once you do that, you can basically pitch in front of their investors. And if you, your pitch and your idea is good enough, they will give you up to 90,000 uh, Great British Pounds for the uh, for building the prototype. And then after six months, I think, you're going to have a demo day uh, when, you, um, when you basically have to present your final product in front of uh, big investors, you know, for raising the first round, essentially. This is how it works. How do I feel about flat earthers? <laughs> <clears throat> I mean, um, I, I, I'm not sure what to answer there. I mean, Flat Earth is... Um, uh, on one hand, I'm kind of... <laughs> it would be awesome if we would have a Flat Earth. And I, I imagine the, the edge of the Earth would be a very popular um, traveling, like a touristic destination. <laughs> so... <laughs> um, yeah, you don't have a product at first. Uh, you, you don't have to have anything at first, right? It's basically you just have a, have a very interesting profile and interesting background, right? And if they pick you through the series of inter interviews, you will then have to find a co-founder and uh, figure out what you're going to build, essentially, which is exactly what we... So I already found a co-founder, and now we're trying to figure out... Um, uh, yeah, so the question is why pounds if it's in Berlin? So no, you are not misunderstanding anything. Um, the Entrepreneur First is a British organization. And uh, prior to this, they never had a program in Berlin. So this is their first Berlin thing. And we are the first cohort in there. So I guess it's going to be converted into euros at the end of the day. But uh, this is what their uh, contract that I signed with them says, basically. It's like up to 90,000 Great British Pounds. I guess it's easier for them just to count in pounds, you know. All right. Uh, let me continue my story about traveling to Fitness Expo, which, again, I said, as I said, I never expected I would do something like this. Uh, this is probably the last place I thought I would ever visit, but um, there we go. So I, I went to the fitness expo called FIBO. Apparently, it's like the world's largest uh, fitness exposition. 
and uh, essentially we just spend half of a day walking around and talking to people to try and figure out uh, what kind of problems do they have and um, it's kind of interesting because you know there's like a lot of a lot of new fitness equipment is quite smart already right so it has a lot of sensors it has it captures a lot of data it can even uh, sort of personalize some stuff for you but the interesting bit is that there is literally one company the whole expo that tries to do something with that data so there's like 90 percent of those companies they just like you know we build that um, elliptical uh, thing or i don't know rowing thing and um we collect this data on how you use it and then we just don't do anything with it and uh, as as a um, i guess for them it's kind of okay because they just I, i'm not even sure in the first place why they started collecting the data from sensors but as a da data scientist who typically works with data, it was very, it was very strange uh, seeing all those people, you know, like, hey, we collected this like megabytes of data from each of your exercises and then we just store it. It's like, okay, that seems like um, quite an opportunity over here. But um, yeah, there, there was one company that actually did work with data. Um, what was it? eGym, I think is the name of it. So let me just make sure that I didn't mess it up. And uh, yes, it is an eGym. Um, it is a German, well, they were a startup right now. They're pretty big actually already. And um, they have like, they do proper machine learning, AI and personalized uh, lessons essentially for you. But they also produce the equipment, which is kind of uh, a bit strange. So they they went, um, the way they raised the money was not by doing the software, but actually by doing the hardware, which is probably the hardest thing you could ever do. And um, I thought it was very interesting because their, uh, their hardware, they didn't use any weights or anything like that. They had a special engine that simulated weights and force. And then by uh, reading the engine parameters, you could actually get very fine grained data about how the person exercised. Um, as a person who is really far away from the health and fitness field, that was absolutely fascinating from my perspective. Uh, but, you know, since they already have everything intact and they already actually use the data. So I was like, okay, you know, maybe that's not the area we want to work in. But it was, anyway, it was a very cool experience just walking around this expo and seeing all those crazy people uh, doing fitness. It's like, um, yeah, I could <laughs> I could never imagine a place like this, to be honest. <laughs> so by the end of the day, we came up with a couple of ideas that we could uh, basically try and do. And uh, we will, um, so I guess the next weeks would be to find, to, um, let me think how to put it. To narrow down those, we have like six ideas, I think, to narrow down those ideas into one, pick one that is gonna be the most promising one, and then try to figure out how, um, if we can get some customers before we actually start the whole thing, or at least some like, you know, maybe non or uh, written agreement or letter of intent or something like this that can basically show the investors that, hey, there is definitely an interest in this area. And uh, because as I said, again, they don't wanna see any code, they don't wanna see any prototypes, they just wanna see that you have a solid story and you maybe have customers, but um, I'm guessing, you know, having customers without having an actual product is a bit damn hard. Uh, but I mean, if we're lucky, if we come up with a, uh, if we narrow down the idea to the one that is going to be like very good, I um, I have a feeling that we could probably even get customers before presenting it to the um, investors in like what six weeks, right? No, eight weeks. So two weeks pass. We have eight more weeks to do that. Um, yeah. So this this is essentially what was happening. Um, uh, uh, okay, hey Mehmatrix, uh, you have a horrible connect, can't lower quality before be, uh, below 1080p, that is weird, uh, it should be, um, wait a second, let me check, quality, it, it, oh, really, it doesn't allow to change the quality, that is something, something unusual, um, hmm, I am not sure why is that, to be honest. I think maybe Twitch is acting up or something, but uh, sorry, I don't really have any any um, 
power over that. Um, um, I wouldn't say I'm back healthy, but <laughs> but thank you. Yes, I'm still thick because you know essentially left half healed to travel to all these crazy expos and do all this crazy stuff. But uh, I think it was worth it. Just hope I'll <coughs> apologies. I just hope I'll get better basically by the um, start of the next week so I can participate in the upcoming events properly. <laughs> yeah, so um, this was so far my experience. So if you guys have any questions, uh, post them to the chat. I will be more than happy to answer. Um, um, okay, no, but wait, I had the quality change on some streams, so I'm not sure how the hell does this works. Um, that is very, very strange indeed. Uh, I will definitely upload it to YouTube as usual. Yes, the I will export it as soon as I'm done with this uh, stream. So, you, you know, if you're having problems watching it here or if you haven't watched it from the beginning, it's going to be VOD on Twitch, it's going to be uh, re-uploaded to my YouTube channel. So... You can watch it there from the start to the end, basically. Um, all right. Um, so, guys, if you have any questions with regarding to EF or the whole process, do send them into chat right now. I will wait for the couple of minutes. And if there are no questions, I guess we can just um, wrap the stream up. If you are not doing hardware equipment or otherwise, then why you might need investors? I mean, as compared to loan in the bank or something. Um... I mean, the problem with it, the problem with a loan in the bank is that you are liable, right? So once you take the money from the bank, you have to return them. And that means if you have an idea that you might think might be worth a lot of money, you take the loan, but then you fail a terrible, uh, you know, in, a, in the most terrible way and you lose everything, you will have to pay the money back to the bank. Uh, if you are doing the same with investors, you typically open... A limited liability company which investors then invest into and if you screw up and if you lose everything essentially you don't own uh, you don't owe any anything to anyone so you can just continue with your next venture for example right and unless you uh, behave terribly and screw everything up even if you fail at the startup you will still have the context to investor and they might invest into your next venture because this is the way they earn money, right? They invest into uh, five to 10 very promising companies. And if even if like the, the way that it works typically is that um, they invest in a range of companies and then if one of them does not fail, they get most of their money back. And that, that basically the this percentage is, uh, I think uh, they, they gave us a number that Typically, 20% of the companies succeed and the 80% is, is basically fail at different stages. So, yeah, you don't really want to take a loan in the bank. <coughs> you really want to have the investor money and uh, essentially not have, not have to pay back all those, you know, whatever the money you get uh, yourself or, you know, get your property confiscated because you failed because your idea wasn't as good for example or you didn't find the market fit that's the general idea any other questions uh yeah i guess uh i guess the whole loan versus investment uh is not very something that you commonly know right so it's it's um, if you are 100% sure that your idea will work, for example, if you build something and you already sold like, you know, number of copies and you're sure you can always sell more and you just need some sort of a starting capital that will allow you to scale, then obviously it would be better to take a loan and uh, then you will have the full ownership of the company, right? But uh, startups typically assume that this is a venture that you are not certain uh off right so you 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 have to be like you have to be convincing to investors first of all but you never know 100 percent that it will succeed this is why taking a loan is very risky thing but you know if you say okay i know that it will work then of course taking loan will be better because you will maintain 100 percent of your company because um once you get the investment the investors typically take some percent of your company depending on the stage and the, the amount of money they invest right 
Um, it is called Entrepreneur First. It should be in the title of the uh, stream, somewhere there in the description as well, I think. Uh, they have locations. In, so they, they, they originally was like the London thing, but now they have uh, four locations. So it's like EF London, EF Berlin, EF uh, Singapore, and I think they're starting in China somewhere, like Shanghai probably or something. So if you're interested in doing your own startup, but don't know um, what exactly you want to do, basically, and if you think your profile is compelling enough for them to get you, then just apply. It's it's a really cool, you know, even even if I terribly fail at everything we do right now, even if I don't start anything, those 56 people or 55 people, actually, plus the EF team that I met here, it is probably the most valuable network that I will ever uh, create in my, or ever have in my life, right? Because those are some, like one of the most talented and interesting people I've met ever in, in the quantity of, you know, like 50 plus people. <laughs> not, not saying that I've, I haven't met anyone more interesting or more smart than those guys, but uh, definitely not like 55 people in one room. <laughs> All right, it's, yeah, let me try that again. Are there any other questions? Do you guys have anything else you wanna know? Uh, it can be anything related to EF, it can be anything related to startups uh, or whatever you can imagine. I am free to, um, I would be happy to answer anything basically. Yeah, sure, Mikkel, uh, you're welcome. Uh, like, you know, I, I'll be really happy to talk about that more once we basically progress with our idea and, and uh, see how that develops. Uh, because again, you know, uh, this is this is gonna be my eighth try at doing a startup. So I failed seven times before on different stages and for <laughs> for completely different reasons, to be honest. Um, but yeah, this time I'm doing the, looks like I'm going to be doing the health related startup. And this is the area that I have zero knowledge of. On the other hand, my co-founder, my partner, uh, has extensive knowledge in health, but is not so much in, you know, data science and AI, for example, like machine learning and stuff. He barely understands how it works essentially. So yeah, we're, we're going to see where all of that goes, uh, really it's actually very exciting, to be honest, you know, it's like, I, I've never thought I would be excited to try and do a startup in health. Uh, yeah, Hex, sure, welcome. Uh, definitely recommend checking them out. Again, you know, if you're interested in doing your own thing, that is one hell of an opportunity. All right, guys, any more questions? Well, the chat seems to be silent. Let me wait for a couple more minutes. And uh, if there is no questions, then well, that was a nice 40 minute long stream. Um, again, you know, two weeks recap. Um, I wish I wasn't sick the first week because there is probably a lot of things that I forgot uh, because we had a lot of different events like happening, but hell if I remember all of that now after two weeks. So I'm gonna try to stream uh, again next Saturday. I'm hoping I won't be sick anymore, dear God, please. Um, yeah, so basically next Saturday, I'm gonna talk about the week three experience and uh, we're gonna see, you know, what kind of work are we gonna do this week? What kind of like, I, I'm guessing it's gonna be mostly about finding customers and customer development, but we're going to see how that ends up. Um, hey, Hex, thank you for the follow, man. Welcome um, to the <laughs> to, to the random streams of random guy talking about software development and startups, I guess. <laughs> All right. Uh, doesn't look like there are any more questions. Uh, so thank you guys for watching. I hope you found something interesting during the live stream. Um, I also hope that... Uh, if you like, if you if you're watching this on YouTube or if you're watching the VOD on Twitch, feel free to contact me in a Discord or YouTube or whatever and ask your questions away. I will 
Um, I will try to help as much as I can uh, because I know that this is a pretty tough area to get into and you know unless you have a lot of experience you will be uh, scared of and terrified of a lot of things. I mean I'm still terrified of a lot of things so yeah basically I can try to help you. So yeah if you have any questions do ask them away. Right no more questions in chat so let's wrap this up here for today. Thank you for watching and I see you next time. If you are waiting for the BXJS weekly uh, JavaScript news podcast, it's going to happen at uh, 8 p.m. Berlin time. So in one hour, do come back to that time. I'm going to do a short break and drink some more tea and let my throat rest a bit because I'm getting a bit cranky. Right. Thank you, guys. And I see you next time. Bye.